Well, good morning, church. How are we doing? Everybody all right? All righty. Well, thank you so much for spending your Sunday morning with us. My name is Andy Clark. I'm one of the pastors here. I hope you're enjoying, enjoying this beautiful weather. It's been a great weekend, so uh, we're going to have a good day with God today. Uh, the Spirit of the Lord is here, and so it's going to be a good day. So we've been in a message series called Walking with Jesus, and it's because after after Easter, the resurrection opens up a whole new relationship with Jesus Christ, and so that begins a walk with Him. Whenever we begin our relationship with Him, we begin to walk with Him, and we've learned that that means that it is a figure of speech, which means to it's this everyday, steady, progressive seeking of and living for Jesus, where God just wants us to every day just put in that steady effort, progressive effort into knowing Him and, and being with Him, and that's what the Bible is calling walking with Jesus. So the first week we learned about the road of life and how tough it can be, but Jesus is there, but also we need to invite Jesus into our homes as well to spend more time with Him, and then, and then we learned about uh, living by the Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit deposited with us, with us. Uh, whenever we believe in Jesus Christ, and so we can walk by the Spirit. And also, last week we talked about wrestling with God. In our walk with God, we're going to wrestle with Him over certain things, that back and forth over different matters that we have. And so, if you want to listen to any of those, you can go on the, our website, hrclex.life, and you can hear those there. So today, we're going to end off our message series with a message called, Pick Up Your Mat and Walk. Okay, pick up your mat and walk. And so, parents, if you have children, this is not a rendition of something that you may tell them a lot, which is clean up your room or walk. Right? That's not, that's not, that's not, a, that's not a rendition of that. So, all right, so we're going to be in the book of John chapter 5 today. John chapter 5. John is in the New Testament. Um, it's the fourth gospel, and here Jesus is into his ministry, and he's been walking around uh, doing different things in Judea, and he's been going, so, so now he's coming from Judea to Galilee, and so we're going to look at this account today and see what we can learn about it in our personal lives as well. So in the book of John, chapter 5, we're going to start in verse 1. It reads, Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. Now, there in Jerusalem, near the Sheep Gate, is a pool, which in Aramaic is called Bethesda, which is surrounded by five colored, covered colonnades. So we'll stop there for a moment. So here, Jesus, okay, so he's going to Jerusalem for one of the festivals, and there in Jerusalem is a pool called Bethesda. All right. it's, it's, it says it's located by the Sheep Gate, which would be in the northern part of the temple. And the Sheep Gate is where they would bring the sacrificial sheep in for uh, the sacrificial rituals that the priest had to do for the forgiveness of sins and other things. All right? So it's by the Sheep Gate. And Bethesda means house of mercy or house of grace. So this pool is five-sided and it's down steps. All right, and then over top of those steps are colonnades, with their por uh, which are like porches, okay? So they're nice porches, and so people would sit underneath those porches on the steps by this pool. So this public pool here, you know, we don't really have public pools like they used to back in those days. So sometimes we lose the meaning. A lot of times when we think of public pools, uh, we think of somewhere where we have to pay to get in, and there's water slides, and there's chimichanga stands, you know, and, and, and lifeguards and all that cool stuff. And, you know, a lot of times when we go to a public pool, we wind up maybe looking something like this whenever we go to our public pool. Got to have on the water wings and the floaties, of course. And, you know, if it's a formal event, you got to wear a tie. So, so, so there we go. So, see, a lot of times we think of public pools, but this isn't what it's talking about, okay? It, it's, it's simply a public pool. And this pool was used for healing and for purification rituals for the temple, okay? So here we have this public pool called Bethesda. And it's a special pool, and people know it. So we're going to keep... We're gonna keep uh, Reading the scripture here and reading a little bit more about this pool of Bethesda. So it says in verse 3, it says, Here a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. 
Now, your Bible may not have verse 4 in it. Uh, They have recently started taking this verse out because it was actually added at a later date. It was not in the original text, but I decided to include it today because I think it just gives good clarification and it adds to the meaning of the account. So verse 4 says, And they waited for the moving of the waters. From time to time, an angel of the Lord would come down and stir up the waters. The first one into the pool after each disturbance would be cured of whatever disease they had. So this pool here was used for healing and it was used for ritual, for purification of ritual rites. Okay, and so this pool would bubble from time to time, and and so people who would who were blind and, and lame and paralyzed and pe- people with diseases, they would lay around near the pool and never bubbled in, bubbled up. They thought that an angel of the Lord was stirring up the water. So they said the first person in the pool would be the it would be the most person likely to be able to receive that miracle of healing. All right, so that's where uh, the pool is. So we have all these people laying around. And so now we're going to look at a testimony of a guy who was there at the pool as we continue in verse 5. It says, uh, One who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool and when the water is stirred. While I am trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. So Jesus is there and he's noticing this guy. And he understands that he's been there for a long time. He's been in this position for a long time. So this man, what the Bible says, is an invalid. Okay? And this word, it means lack of strength, weakness, a disease. Okay? Like a debilitating disease. So it can mean different things. But as we see this man here, he is obviously paralyzed, at least from the waist down, because he has no one there to help pick him up in the pool. Okay? This man cannot walk and so Jesus is there he's watching this man and he sees him so he decides to go up to him of all the people in the pool Jesus goes up to this man and he asks him a very interesting question he says do you want to get well and the guy answers says well I have no one to help me in the pool when the water stirred there's nobody here to help me and also whenever I do try to get in everybody just steps right in front of me I can't get in the pool So Jesus, in his love and grace, in verse 8, then Jesus said to him, get up, pick up your mat, and walk. At once, the man was cured. He picked up his mat and walked. So here we have this wonderful testimony of of our Savior, love and grace. Here is a man who is in need of rescue, and Jesus finds him. What a great testimony. So let's try to understand this man a little bit first before we start seeing how this applies to our life, okay? So what we have is we have a video of the series Chosen. You may have watched the Chosen before. It talks about the life of the disciples with Jesus. And so this is actually a scene from this part of the Bible, from the story in the Bible. So let's look at this, and this will help give some context of what this man is truly going through.
What an interesting take on history. So when the water bubbles, all these people have their hope in this pool, and they run, and they crawl, and they backbite, and they fight to get in this pool. And here is this man who has been here for years and years and years, and he is struggling, and now he is in a very, very bad and hopeless position. But honestly, he's doing the best of, he's doing the best of what he can with what he has. You know, because one thing, he's not in modern America. You know, it's not like he can just go somewhere and they'll help him out. It's not like he can just go and get like an electric wheelchair or something. You know, you know, back in those ancient days, if you didn't have anyone to help you out, you didn't have any way around at all. And so apparently this man doesn't have anyone to help him for some reason. And to make it even worse, now he has put all of his hope in this worldly water. He sits and he waits for this bubble to happen. And he puts all of his hope. And when he tries to get in, he is stopped from getting in. And so now, and now the situation seems very hopeless. He's just barely scraping by. I mean, I'm sure he's laying there. I'm sure he's probably very thin. He's probably having trouble eating and showering. He probably has an odor to him. He's probably somebody that society has casted away altogether. In fact, when he passes away, maybe, you know, maybe no one else will even miss. So here is this man who has put his hope and his faith in this. And now what he has put his hope and his faith in is not even working anymore. And really, he's stuck. He is stuck in that same position Until something else happens. Something different has to happen. He has to try something else. This is not working. He is stuck in that position until something else happens or until he does something else differently. So I think a lot of us today can relate with this story. Because we've been talking about walking with Jesus. And really we've been talking about things that hinder our walk with Jesus. You know, like last week we talked about things that we wrestle with. And so, we, so we've been going through this list of things that are in the Bible and things that we struggle with, in which situations in which we can feel stuck. And a lot of times we're not going to get any further in our walk with Jesus until this situation is handled or something, do, something else happens or we do something else differently. Basically, we all have our map. Maybe, maybe it's a relationship. Maybe our marriage just seems stuck. Maybe we just keep going through the same old things. We keep arguing about the same old things. We're not growing. We're not getting anywhere else. Our marriage just seems to be stuck in the same old spot. Maybe it's an addiction. Maybe I've tried to get over the addiction for years and years, and it's not going anywhere. The addiction just stays the same all the time. Maybe it's finances. Maybe we're in debt and we can't seem to climb out. And no matter what we do, we just stay stuck in this position all the time. Maybe it's unforgiveness. Maybe something happened to us that we just can't seem to let go of. And unforgiveness is causing bitterness and it's causing problems in other areas of our lives. Maybe it's something in our Christian character we just can't seem to change, whether it's gossip or maybe it's cleaning our mouth up. Maybe we try, try, and try not to talk negative or cuss or whatever it is, but we just can't seem, we just seem stuck in that place. Or maybe it's our relationship with God altogether. Maybe our relationship with God just seems stagnant. And and it's like no matter what we do, we just can't seem to grow with God. A lot of times we just feel like we're We're just stuck on our mat, and we're not going anywhere. So we sit on our mats, and we look, and we wait for a bubble. We wait for something in the world to try to change it, something to give us hope, something that's going to work. And just like that man, I mean, he crawled with everything that he had to get there. And so many times, don't we do the same thing? Don't we try to find a solution, something else? Man, we'll crawl. Oh, If I can just convince my spouse that everything's his or her fault. Oh, if I can just convince them, you know, of this. If I can just get to that bank. Oh, come on, bank. You've got to give me that money. You're my only hope to get me out of this situation. Oh, I'm just going to pretend like that thing never happened to me. And I'm just going to shove it deep down inside and just pretend like it never happened. Oh, that, 
that addiction. I, I'm going to beat it this time. I'm, I'm going to stop. I'm not going to drink today. I'm not going to look at that stuff on the internet. Today's going to be the day. I'm just, I'm just going to try. I'm going to wake up today. I, I'm really going to read my Bible today. I'm really going to pray. I'm really going to seek God. I'm really going to do these things. But it just seems like somehow, some way, we just always seem to find ourselves back on the mat. We're just back in the same position. Nothing's changed. And so many times, we just want to just lay there like this is the way it's going to be. And we can become weak and thin spiritually. We can lose faith. We can lose hope. We can have this spiritual odor about us that even though we may be stinking, we, we get used to it, but everybody else notices it. Somehow, some way, we find ourselves back in that same position with these things we struggle with on our mat. And nothing's going to change until something else changes. And then there's Jesus. And there's Jesus. And Jesus finds us. He comes to us. And what's so interesting, he comes and maybe his question is, Hey, do you want to get well? I mean, what kind of question is that? So he goes up to the guy who's laying there and he says, do you want to get well? And his answer is, well, I don't have anybody to help me. I don't have anybody to help me in the water. And whenever I try, somebody else gets in my way. They cut me off. They shut me down. Well, here's the thing. That's not what Jesus asked. He didn't say, hey, Why don't you tell me what worldly thing you're putting all your hope and your faith to, you know, that keeps letting you down. Why don't you tell me what that is? He didn't say, hey, tell me what person in your life you're blaming your situation on and why you keep staying in the same place. Please tell me in this world, who's not helping you? He didn't say, hey, who keeps getting in your way every time you try to change? Somebody shuts you down, tells you, turns you away, does something to you. Please, tell me the people in your life, and they're the reason why you're still there. That's not what Jesus asked. What he said was, do you want to get well? And this term well, it doesn't mean cured of that one thing. The term well, it means holistic view, mir- spiritually, emotionally, physically, environmentally, with your family, like everything, like the whole view. Jesus isn't just worried about that one situation. Jesus wants to make everything better. So he says, do you want to get well? And boy, I I can imagine what he was thinking. No, Jesus, I don't. Thanks, Captain Obvious. No, I just want to keep laying here on my mat Stuck here for the rest of my life, putting hope in things that won't hurt. Stuck here by myself, stinking, barely eating. I, You know, I just want to sit here. And every time I put my hope in that thing and it doesn't work, I just die a little bit more on the inside. And I just stare at the sky like, why is this my life? No, Jesus, no. I don't want this to change. I don't want this to be better. I don't want to get well. Why would you ask me that? You know, it's so interesting that Jesus asks us the same thing. Do you want to get well? And we can say the same thing. Jesus, really? Are you really asking me that right now? Like, you don't think I want my marriage to be better? You think I love arguing with my spouse? You think I love going to bed angry and every day having to walk on eggshells and have these horrible days? No, Jesus, no. I don't want my marriage to change at all. Thank you. You think I love being in this addiction and watching my family having to turn me away and stealing money from my kids and going back to this? You think I like? No, Jesus, no. No, I don't want to get better. Thank you. You think I love being in debt? You think I love hating that person who did something wrong with me? You think I love not growing in my relationship with God? I can't do No, Jesus, no. I don't want to get better. I don't want to get well. Thank you. But so many times our answers are the same. Well, nobody's helping me. There's people, my family's not here to help me. This person won't help me, Jesus. I want to get better, but I can't because this person here won't do their part. 
Jesus, I want to get better, but every time I try, somebody just shuts me down. Somebody's in my way, opposition comes, and I just crawl right back to the mat. Every time I get a little opposition, every time I get a little smack to the face by the world, I crawl right back, Jesus. It's just not easy enough. The path isn't easy for me. That's why I'm here. Or Jesus, these things in this world's got to happen. This person's got to say, the government needs to change. Uh, you know, this person needs to do that. I need this, right? Like, Jesus, all these things in the world that aren't happening, that's why I'm not getting better. That's why I'm not getting well. And so we go and we stay stuck on our map. But it is an interesting question. He says, hold on a second. You say you want to get well, but why do you keep doing it? You say you want your marriage to get better and let the past be in the past, but every time you get mad, all you do is bring up the past. You say you want to climb out of finance and out of debt, but you spend $14 a day on lunch. Where you can go to the store and make your lunch and eat for three days. You say you want to get over that bitterness and that anger, but every time that person's name, you just grab it on and you think about it and you relive it, man. You just hate them over and over again. You say you want to grow in your relationship with God, but you don't make any time for Him. You're not getting up any earlier. You're not reading your Bible. You're not praying. You, you say you want to be better, but you keep going back to the mat. So let me ask you again. Honestly, do you want to get well? Because we play a part in this as well. But Jesus, in his love and kindness, Jesus, in his infinite wisdom, he comes up to us. And what does he say? Get up! That had an exclamation point on it. It wasn't a question mark. It wasn't a period. It wasn't a comma. It was an exclamation point. Jesus says, man, get up off that mat. That's not who I made you to be. He didn't want that guy living on the mat. He had a blessed and beautiful life for that man. He could have accepted his position and went and lived that life, but instead he stayed there looking at the same thing for years and years. Jesus is like, don't spend your life doing that. That's not who you are in me. I could turn this into something different, but you've got to put some action. Come on, get up off that thing. I have a beautiful and blessed life for you. So come on, pick up that mat. Pick up that mat. Take that mat that you have today, and I want you to take that mat, and let's walk. See, that man was not going to walk any further with Jesus until he got up and picked it up. The same way with us today. It's hard to walk with God when we have that thing that just keeps us in the same spot. So Jesus says, pick up the mat. He's like, look, one thing is, in me, the battle's already won. See, when that man, he was healed when Jesus told him to get up. So Jesus told him to take his mat. Why does he need his mat anymore? He doesn't need it anymore. He don't need to lay on that mat. Why would Jesus say, take it with you? For one thing, we need to take control of it. This thing don't own us. We got the, we got the powerful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We got the name that's above every name. For one thing, the battle's already won. Jesus already defeated the mat. He says, pick up, take control of that thing. He says, yes, take it with me because you know what? We're going to walk together. And we done established the walk is that steady, progressive seeking of and living for Jesus. So while we walk with Jesus, we handle this mat together. Because see, here's the thing. Problems are complicated. We want to smack on the forehead, be healed, not, nothing happens anymore. Problems are complicated. That's why Jesus says, well, in a holistic view, he knows that to, to, to be really healed, we need a whole bunch of areas of our lives to change. A lot of times it's a heart condition that we're carrying around us for, for years. It ain't even that situation. It's something we need on the inside. So Jesus is like, look, you take that situation and we're going to work on the whole thing while we walk together. 
And the cool thing is, while we walk with Jesus and this becomes healed, this no longer becomes the, the situation that, that leads, leads us around. It no longer becomes a test of faith. You know what this map becomes? It becomes our testimony. We say, let me show you what Jesus has brought me through. 15 years of alcohol and drug addiction, homelessness, incarceration. Guess what? I don't do that anymore. I, that's my testimony. So we can say, I've been through marriage problems, but guess what? With the Lord Jesus Christ, it'll never be a perfect relationship, but man, it can get a whole lot better. Jesus has brought us through our marriage problems. Jesus brought me through my financial problems. He's brought me through addiction. He's brought me through all these things. So one thing this map becomes, it becomes our testimony. Also, it becomes a reminder of where we don't want to return to. When the devil comes and says, hey, try that again, we say, I know what that brings. I'm not going there again. You ain't letting me down on that mat again. I'm, I'm carrying the mat now through, through the authority of Jesus Christ. It's my mat. See, Jesus says, pick it up. Let's walk. Let's get this thing. Let's do this thing. This is not who you are. This is not who you are meant to be. I've already defeated it. It's a command from the Lord Jesus Christ. From the one that spoke everything into existence. He is speaking into our life today. So what does get up mean for us today? Like I said, problems are complicated. And they need all kinds of situations. But there's four basic essentials that we need in this picking up of the mat of getting up. So I'm going to go through these quickly. One is... Faith in Jesus Christ. Maybe we need to have faith that Jesus can do this. Maybe we never had. Maybe we never have faith in Jesus. Maybe we never tried it his way. Maybe today we need to at least allow Jesus. Maybe today we need to have faith that Jesus can do this in our life. And say so we have faith in Jesus. Okay, we have that. Well, how about this? Do things his way. See, Jesus says, get up, pick up your mat, and walk in those certain things. And so he did th that exact thing. For us, in order for us to get over things in Jesus' way, we have to do things his way. We have to heal our marriage his way. We have to get out of debt his way. We have to get over resentment and fear and shame and guilt and remorse and addiction and, and all these problems that we have. We have to do things his way. And next is get involved in the community of believers. See, so say we're doing things his way. Look, now we need to get involved because Jesus will bring people into our life to help us. The answer comes a lot of times from other believers. And so we getting involved, or maybe it just means getting counseling. Some type of outside help from our situation from us. And say we're doing all that. Say we have faith and we're, we're really trying to do it God's way and we're involved in a connect group or we're going to counseling or something. Well, hey, don't give up. The last one is don't ever give up. Keep going. Keep pushing on. Keep trudging on. And with faith and belief that Jesus Christ can heal. Faith and belief that that mat can become your testimony. So whatever it is today, whatever is hindering our relationship with God, even if it's just, uh, even if it's just seeking issues, even if it's just we can't, we can't put, put, put time and effort into God knowing him more, whatever stands in our way of our walk with Jesus today, this is what we need to do. We need to crawl to him. We need to crawl to him the same way we crawl to everything else in this world and we think things are going to happen. We have so much faith and trust that we do a crawl to Jesus. Because let me tell you, God can turn this thing around. God can turn it around. And so to end off with our walk with Jesus, just like the Bible says, throw off everything that hinders our walk with him and fix our eyes on him. That's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to throw off these things that hinder us. And we're going to crawl to him today. Even if that means crawling up to the altar, 
putting our face on the altar, crying out to Him. If it means hitting our knees on the floor. So many times we care about what everybody else is thinking. It ain't none of their business while you're up here. If you're worried about why everybody else is up here, you need to be up here too. Don't worry about this sawdust. Get the plank out of the owner. That's what I'm saying. When it comes to God, don't worry about anyone, anywhere, anytime. Whenever we, God is number one all the time. And it doesn't matter why. It, 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 it could be our children. It could be praying for somebody else. The point is, crawl to God today. Crawl to the living water. Because let me tell you, we are in Bethesda. We are in the house of mercy. We are in the house of grace. But we don't have, we don't have some worldly water. We got the living water. See, that thing was located near the sheep gate where they would bring the sacrificial lamb into the temple. Hey, look, the sacrificial lamb's already been. We're covered by the blood of Jesus. We can overcome by the power of his word and our testimony. By the blood of the lamb and the power of our testimony. So today, whatever it is, let's surrender with Jesus. Let's get up. Let's pick up that mat. And let's take it with us while we walk with Jesus, while we talk with him and allow him more into our lives. Let's give it to him. Because God can absolutely turn this thing around. Let's go to the living water today. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for who you are. God and what you do in our lives and Lord I just thank you so much for this for this series Lord about walking with you and how we just learn how we have this everyday steady walk Lord and so many great things can happen and God you know that as people Lord we are struggling God we are struggling in our walk with you Father we are not perfect we face situations in our lives and we try and we try but we just get stuck we just don't know what to do anymore Lord and we just take that mat and we just get comfortable on it because that's the way it's always going to be and unless that thing we put our hope in works then we have no hope but in your love in your grace you seek us out you come to us and you say, look, let's get well. I'm not even just trying to fix this one situation. I'm not trying to do a band-aid. Like, you don't understand this life that I have for you where you can be whole. So you tell us, Lord, get up. Have faith in me. Do things my way. Come to me. Go to the community of believers and never give up. Come and let's walk together. Let's talk together. And you can overcome this to the point that it, that it is not a debilitating mat anymore. That is not your security blanket. That is your testimony of what I can do in your life. So God, let us have the faith today to crawl to you. Not caring what anybody else in the world thinks. Not, not caring anything, Lord. Give us the the. The, uh, the gumption, Lord, basically to just crawl to you today in faith that if you don't do it, nothing else can. Let us have that faith that you have all power. So Jesus, have mercy on us today and help us heal. Help us get well as we worship you. We thank you, Father. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.